uh, we're good to go. We live? Okay. Yeah. Hello, my name is Dan English. I'm Microsoft SQL Server MVP. We're here live at the SQL Saturday in Minnesota, and I'm here today talking with Ar Argenis Fernandez. Hello, Argenis. Hello, Dan. How are you? Um, can you just tell me who you are and uh, how you got involved in the SQL Server community and how you became involved in SQL Saturday in Minnesota as well? All right. So uh, I have been a member of the SQL Server community since well, around 2009 is when I started. Uh, joining SQL Saturdays and uh, presenting. Actually, my first talk was in SQL, uh, SQL Saturday 40 down in South Florida in 2010. I am a SQL Server MVP also, as you are, and I'm also a Microsoft Certified Master in SQL Server 2008. And I speak at a variety of uh, conferences, so you know, SQL Saturday in Minnesota is one of the few cities in the US that I've actually had never spoken <laughs> at, so I am very glad to be here today. I did a pre-con yesterday, actually, uh, on the uh, topic of uh, SQL Server internals, internal data structures, and we also spoke a little bit about uh, data recovery and how to deal with corruption in SQL Server. Great. Well, you picked a great time of the year to come to Minnesota. Um, I'm sure you'd be uh, more than welcome to come back in February if you want to experience some of our <laughs> cold weather as well. <laughs> this is actually the first time that I am in Minnesota without a jacket on. Yes. <laughs> it's pretty fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty nice outside today. It is. Um, let's talk about some SQL Server security stuff. Uh, let's talk about SQL injection. Uh, what is a SQL injection and how widely is that used today in data security breaches? Boy, so SQL injection is actually one of the top uh, 10 attacks, like, uh, attack vectors used today. Uh, SQL injection is basically when somebody takes a, the, creates a malicious entry on a malicious, malicious input against a uh, particular uh, say a web page or a store procedure or simply a call against a particular function and and exploits a vulnerability in that uh, in that uh, object in the sense that it, it attempts to transform what it's actually sent to the back end so that can you fetch data from the back end uh, and now uh, that SQL injection is actually one of the biggest problems out there you know, a lot of companies are very concerned about this one of the biggest breaches in security uh, have been due to SQL injection attacks so that's that it's a uh, very, very widely used vector out there. So people could use a SQL injection to get information out of a company and like return like their customer information and yep. and that's how some of this credit information gets exposed. Correct. Right. Yes. So because of weaknesses on their system and inputs to uh, databases not being sanitized, okay, um, the you know the data is being uh, essentially uh, stolen out of these databases. Great. Well, thank you. Um, let's talk about uh, transparent data encryption. What is transparent data encryption? How long has it been in place with SQL Server and why should companies use that? So transparent data encryption is a great technology to use when you have uh, to suffice a requirement to encrypt data at rest. Uh, transparent data encryption basically works by encrypting the data behind the scenes. So the database, en the database engine knows that it has to store the data as encrypted, but when it's being worked out in memory and the and, and uh, during uh, and the conversation with the application, the data is not encrypted. So that's why it's called transparent because it really only encrypts behind the scenes. So that means that your actual the actual data files and your transaction log files are going to be encrypted in your storage. Sure. And it's been actually been around since SQL Server 2008, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. It's been around for quite a while. Yeah, a lot of financial in institutions are using it out there. And is that something that would require us to be on a specific edition of SQL Server possibly? Absolutely, yeah. You have to be on, on Enterprise Edition of SQL Server to leverage that feature. Do you know if that feature has been made available like in the cloud with Azure at all? Well, uh, SQL, Azure, uh, SQL, uh, SQL Database does not offer anything like transparent data encryption. But if you're on a SQL Azure VM, mm -hmm. uh, you can most definitely use a TDE if you're using the right version of SQL Server, of course, Enterprise Edition. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Which, by the way, is also available on Developer Edition, which happens to be happens to have the same set of features <laughs> as Enterprise Edition. That is correct. Yes, good thing to watch out for. Um, can you tell us about database firewalls and how are database firewalls different than normal firewalls? So database firewalls are actually devices that sit uh, right in front of the database, like net network switches that sit right in front of the database. And essentially, they parse every single TTS packet. And TTS is tabular data stream. It's a protocol that SQL Server uses for client-server communications. Uh, basically, what, it do, what these devices do is they like, crack open every single TTS packet. They inspect it to see if it matches a set of rules. And if that packet doesn't match that set of rules, it gets rejected and gets audited and gets placed on a, onto a, yeah, 
uh, sort of a quarantine uh, database somewhere so they can be reported on and, and, and administrators can take an action on it. Okay. What about data cor corruption? Do you have any tips or tricks, um, ways that companies can avoid data corruption? Um, any techniques that they should implement when sure. doing so? So SQL Server actually has a lot of mechanisms for dealing with data corruption and try to prevent it and detect it that's as early as it happens. I mean, there's no infallible solution for, for uh, making sure that's never going to happen. But uh, SQL Server has things like page verification options that people should leverage, by, and by default they're enabled, actually. Page uh, verification checksum basically calculates a checksum of the entire SQL uh, data page before it's actually written to disk. And then when the page is read from disk, the checksum is validated. So it's calculated, and whatever the checksum that was saved on disk is it's, uh, measured against the one that was just calculated. If it matches, the page is good. So that's how you detect uh, corruption very early on. It's a great protection mechanism that SQL Server has. Okay. But one of the recommendations that I tell Fox all the time is that you should check for corruption very often to have that peace of mind. Run DBCC, check DB as often as you possibly can. Do you have any uh, tips for anyone getting uh, getting started in SQL Server on the, like for a database administrator? Any tips or advice that you would give them? Sure. Look, I mean, books are great, but blogs are better. Uh, we members of the SQL Server community typically blog a lot. I'm not, I'm not a, a fairly constant blogger, but there are people out there who are constantly cranking really good information, so just watch out for the, the, their RSS feeds and keep up to date that way. It's a fantastic way to learn. And also, there's tons of resources for beginners, like SQL University, which is a project that was run by a, by a friend of mine, Jorge Zagara, who now works for Microsoft, at SQLUniversity.com, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he has a Twitter handle, which is kind of funny, uh, SQL Chicken. <laughs> so uh, you can search for that, SQL University, SQL Chicken, and then you'll get there. If people resource. want to get more information about yourself, are there ways that they can reach out to you? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'll, I'm always on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is at DVRGenis. Uh, I'm also constantly monitoring a hashtag on Twitter, which is Pound SQL Help. Pound SQL Help is a, it's a hashtag that most of us people involved with the SQL Server community are watching constantly, answering questions that are placed by people there. It's actually a very good resource. And is there anything else, uh, if they want to get more information about database security, do you have any other resources? or? Yeah, absolutely. So actually, on the, on the talk that I gave today about security, I recommended a book by Denny Cherry called uh, Securing SQL Server. It's on the second edition right now, but the third edition of the book is going to come out in December. So watch for that. And I think you actually started a virtual chapter as well? I did. Yeah, my friend Robert Davis and I founded what's called the Security Virtual Chapter for Pass. Our address is security.sqlpass.org. You can go there and, and check it out. It has got a whole bunch of presentations that were previously recorded on uh, security topics related to SQL Server. Great. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate right. your time. Thank you for having me. <laughs>